Before ordering your tile stencil, measure your tile. The correct way to measure your tile is from tile edge to tile edge. Make sure you do not include the grout lines. We recommend buying two stencils because it makes your project go by way faster and easier. Before you start painting, for extra adhesion, sand your tiles down with 220 grit sandpaper. Then, rid your floors of any dust or dirt that may be left there. We recommend TSP, a heavy duty floor cleaner, when cleaning your floors before you stencil. Tape the perimeter of your bathroom floor and your toilet to avoid getting paint in unwanted areas. After taping the baseboard, it's time to prime your floor. We recommend Stix Primer because we found it provides the best adhesion. We're using a chip brush to paint the borders first, making sure we reach all the corners. Then, we're going to go in with a dense foam roller to cover the rest of the floor. We are going to apply about 2-3 to three coats of primer before the base coat. We sand and prime the floor before stenciling because we want to make sure the paint sticks to the tiles before we start painting. Once the primer is dry, we're going to be painting our floor our base coat color. You can save yourself a step and some money and get your primer tinted the desired floor color you want at your local paint store. Otherwise, grab your paint color and apply two to three coats of your base coat color. Apply spray adhesive to the back of your tile stencil. This is a key component to avoid any bleed that might occur underneath the tile stencil. For this specific floor, we want to ignore the grout lines. We decided this style would look best with this linoleum floor because the space between the tiles is too thin. We are placing the stencil directly on the tile where the edges meet. Because we are not stenciling the grout lines, we covered the repeating registration marks with blue painter's tape. Another key factor when stenciling the perfect tile floor is all about how you load your dense foam roller. Evenly load your paint onto your roller and offload excess paint onto a paper towel. Then, with light pressure, apply paint onto the stencil. If there's too much paint on your roller and you press down way too hard, you will get some bleed. Most likely, to accomplish this project, you'll need two coats. Since we did not stencil the registration marks, we will align the stencil right next to the other so the corners touch. Now repeat this process on each full tile. Tile stencils are super flexible and can bend to fit tricky corners. Just roll your paint as close as you can to the edge and then go back with your professional stencil brush and pounce it where the floor meets the wall. Push down the stencil when pouncing in that area for crisp lines. Our tile stencils are even flexible enough to fit around a curvy toilet. You can use a roller, but we find that the best results when stenciling around a toilet are when you use a professional stencil brush. For those extra hard to reach places, this is where buying a second stencil comes in handy. Measure your partial tile and cut your stencil accordingly. Then place your stencil and fill in those tiles. This works great for tight spaces like underneath the sink or around extra toilet pipes. Don't be afraid to freehand any leftover space the stencil can't reach.
On to our final step. Once you have finished stenciling and the floor is completely dry, it's time to seal it with water-based polyurethane. It's important to use water-based polyurethane because it's non-toxic, it has a rapid dry time, and it doesn't yellow over time. We recommend two to three coats.